RV solar is a topic that a lot of people are excited about, but there's a lot of misconceptions out there. So today we're going to tackle the basics of RV solar. Understanding an RV's electrical system is a complicated subject. You've got batteries, solar panels, inverters, AC, DC, amperages, amp hours, volts, watts. It's easy to get overwhelmed. So we're going to boil it down to its simplest terms. As a disclaimer, there are always one-offs and exceptions and circumstances where this may not be 100% true, but for the most part what we're talking about is true for most RV solar applications. So first I'm going to explain it at a 5th grade level, then a ninth grade level, and then a 12th grade level. So here's the 5th grade level. You have your RV. You've got your solar panels up here. And your RV has a battery. And we have the sun. The only thing that solar panels do is they charge your batteries. That is it. They don't run your AC, they don't run your cooktop, they don't run your fridge, it only charges batteries. So your solar panel here takes the sunlight, converts it into energy to charge your batteries. That's it, super simple. Okay, let's go to the ninth grade example. All right, same setup. Your solar panels take sunlight, turn it into energy. Then it goes into this magic box we call the charge controller. This is a super smart genius box. Basically its job is to make sure the batteries charge as fast and as efficiently as possible. So all it's saying is thank you for the energy solar panels. Let's see how I can make that most useful to the batteries. If the battery's totally full, and you keep charging a battery, it's really, really bad for it. So the charge controller is doing a whole bunch of brainiac things with your battery just to control how it's charged. And the charge controller only controls how your battery's charged with solar. If you like hook up to a pedestal at your RV park, that will charge your battery, but not through the charge controller. A little bit confusing, but they are different systems there. Okay, ninth grade level. All of these panels feed to a charge controller. It takes all that energy and decides how best to use it to charge your battery. All right, 12th grade level. We're gonna use an analogy here. Over here is our same story. Some people call solar panels, all the guys in the industry who know it call it PV for photovoltaic. It's turning photo or light into volts, voltaic. So sometimes you'll hear it referred to as PV. Those just mean the solar panels part. So your panels come in, they go to the charge controller, which goes to charge your battery. And then when you use stuff, it comes off your battery. So like we'll say your headlights are on, your battery's feeding your headlights. So here's our analogy. Pretend this is water. Okay, this is us, and our goal is to take nice, long, hot showers. This is our shower head. Okay, now our shower is kind of primitive. It's not a normal house shower. Our shower here pulls water from a little tank, and our tank is the size of a drinking glass, maybe two cups of water, okay? We got a really small tank. And then the way our tank fills is we've got a funnel on the roof of our house and it collects rainwater. And the rainwater goes in the funnel and fills our little glass here. A cup the size of a drinking glass of water, less than half a gallon, a few cups, we're gonna get about a two second shower. Not quite what we were hoping for. This is how most, most RV systems come with a really small drinking glass. So here, let's make our analogy. Our solar panels are the funnel. They collect the rain and they're charging the battery or filling our glass here. This is the battery 
and then whatever the electricity the battery uses for headlights or fridge or heater or whatever, that's our shower, okay? I hope that analogy makes sense. It makes sense in my head. So let's say we hop in here, turn on the shower, we've got a full glass of water, in two seconds it's totally gone. So now we can turn the shower off and wait a few days for it to rain and collect another glass full of shower water. Now we can take another two second shower. That's not very efficient. So what a lot of people do is they forget about the cup size and say, let's just put a whole bunch of solar on the roof. Let's collect as much of that rainwater. Let's put 10 panels on the roof. And then that glass will fill up quicker. So now we go to take a shower. We take a two second shower because we run out of water and then we turn it off. And now we only have to wait half an hour for this to fill back up for another two seconds of shower. So all these solar panels, even if we had, let's say we had 1 million funnels on the roof. So now what can happen is we can take a shower and as the water drains, it's being replenished by the rain. And then we can take a shower as long as we want. Now we can't really take 1 million funnels and put them on the roof and it doesn't rain that much. What if it doesn't rain? Let's say we have a million panels on the roof and it stopped raining for a week we can still only take a two second shower. Or let's say we want to take a shower at night. We've had all million of these collecting it, but all they can do is fill this cup. So this cup's totally full of water. Now we take a shower at night and it's still only a two second shower because this all drained and it's not being replenished because these can't collect rain at night. Or in other words, in our analogy, it can't collect sunlight at night. So now we're stuck. We bought all these solar panels, but we can still only take a two second shower unless it's raining when we take a shower. So now what we need to do is get a bigger water tank. Let's say we don't have a million anymore. Let's just say we've got our five. And now our water tank is a hundred gallons. So now what happens is we start with a full tank. Now we can take a shower for let's say five hours or we can take five one hour showers so this is really cool because now we are not just emptying a little cup we got this giant reserve so anytime we want water we we take a shower so now let's say day one we're at 100 gallons day two we're at 80 we've used some of that water and it hasn't hasn't rained so we can't fill this up day three we're at 60 Day four, we're at 40. Day five, we're at 20 gallons, and then we run out of water. And then it finally ra it finally rains. So yay, now we can fill up our 100 gallon tank. Now before, with five panels, when we just had our little cup, this filled up fast. You know, that only took half an hour to fill it up. But now we have 100 gallons to fill. Because of that, these can't possibly keep up, but they're trying their best. So if we have a lot of rain, It'll slowly fill, and depending on our output, and let's say we like huge amounts of water in our showers, like fire hose water. We are gonna drain this way faster than we can fill it. Same thing over here. Let's say we have a giant residential fridge. Let's say we have, we're running the AC all the time. The amount coming out of the battery that it's using for all that is so much more than we could ever put in with the solar panels. So when I hear a lot of people say, oh, just put 10 solar panels on your Airstream, I realize they don't understand this whole battery bank piece. The battery bank is key and we should build our solar system around how much our battery can take. So don't just think that magically buying solar is going to give you unlimited showers as long as you want. It has to incorporate with the battery. Okay, let's take a break.